Hello, I'm Jane Goldman. I've always been fascinated by psychic phenomena and the paranormal, and, and I am open-minded. But I'm also one of those kind of people who has a hard time believing in things if I haven't seen them for myself. So that's why I decided to take a very hands-on approach to my investigations into the paranormal. I've asked the experts whether they can teach me 10 different skills, and I've got just a month to learn each one. At the end of the four weeks, I'm going to be tested. <laughs> what, what have I let myself in for? In this programme, I'm going to be investigating the skill of psychometry. That's the name for the psychic ability to pick up information about an object's history and its owners simply by touching it. They say walls can talk, and the general idea is that if I was a psychometrist, something like this would be saying all sorts of things to me. But as it is even in this absurdly mystical atmosphere, um, it's not saying anything. So I've only got the evidence of my five senses right now. Apparently, I need more senses than that. And I don't really know where to start, but luckily, I know a woman who does. Jenny Bright is one of Britain's best-known psychometrists. Today, she's come over to give me my first practical demonstration. Jenny's been told absolutely nothing about this piece of rock, but between you and me, it's a chunk of the Berlin Wall. I wonder what she'll get from it. I, I really feel a bit annoyed with this, and I, and I don't know why. Um, I feel as though I'm quite strong and this has got to be put down there and we've got to work as part of a team. But I feel as though people are lifting, I don't know, with the slabs of things or machinery and I can see a couple of, of, of people moving things as though they're dragging something. And I feel as though in some way there's machinery um, involved in some way and as if at some stage people maybe have camped outside. I feel as though people have sat against it and maybe eaten bread and, yeah, maybe bread and cheese. <laughs> and they're pulling things, things around them as, as if they're trying to make or break or break down something. And then it will all be all right when, when that's done. Do you want me to tell you what it is? Yeah. It's a piece of the Berlin Wall. Oh, is that's it? Oh, very good. Oh. Very good. oh, well, that's why then. Do you remember a first time that you picked up an object and suddenly found all sorts of information popping into your head? It didn't really come strong until I'd actually had children of my own. Really? And then I would practice holding things that belong to them or their friends. Right. And it's really, Jane, everybody's got it. It's just practice. Really? And it's believing in yourself and believing that you can do it. Right. And that's the main thing. OK. What's next for me if I'm looking into the subject? Well, I what I suggest is that you come up to see me in Nottingham. OK, thank you. And okay. I'll assess you. Right, that sounds ominous. <laughs> yes, and, and see if you have got something that we can okay. work on. And, and if you have, yeah. then I'll train you. OK. OK. <laughs> thank you. I've just come back from meeting Jenny Bright for the first time and uh, having my first one-to-one -one brush with psychometry and um, I've got to say I'm feeling quite apprehensive about giving it a go. Watching Jenny, who has done this for years, uh, you know, and hearing her explain that what basically happens is images and kind of concepts come into her head and she speaks them as she sees them. It makes me realise that it's not I don't know, it, it's not that idea that maybe people have of psychometry that you can pick something up and go, right, this is the Berlin Wall. But, um, for instance, you know, something like uh, people eating cheese isn't something that I'd necessarily associate with the Berlin Wall. But, you know, that came to Jenny and, um, you know, what if I pick up a piece of the Berlin Wall and only get that people are eating cheese next to it? No one's going to know what the heck I'm talking about and it's not going to look great. <laughs> Thank you.
At our first meeting, Jenny had promised, or possibly threatened, to see if I had any potential as a psychometrist. Now, the moment of truth has arrived. And it looks like I'm about to find out. First, Jenny gave me some breathing exercises. She said this would help me tune into the most effective state of mind. Apparently, I must imagine that I'm surrounded by golden light of protection. Well, hold on, protection from what? Nobody told me I was going to need protecting from anything. Now it's assessment time. Jenny's prepared a pack of Zeno cards. Zeno cards are marked with one of five symbols and they're used to test psychic ability. I wonder how I'll score. Now. Now. Jenny raced through all the 25 Zeno cards. She said now. she'd be using her own psychic powers telepathically now. to send me each symbol as she saw now. it. Now. Stop. I had no time to think, but we perhaps that was the yes. point. Oh, yeah, the last How one. How many was have right. you got? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah! Is that good? Oh, really, really good! good. Oh, good. Yes. Oh, oh, brilliant! Exciting! Five is chance. Oh, really? Any more than that? Oh, exciting. Jenny, wow! Oh, God, Jenny, that's so <laughs> good. I was a bit spooked, but Jenny's delight was infectious. I think I got a little bit overexcited there. Had in, a long time oh in lesson two, Jenny was going to show me how you can psychometrize not just objects, but buildings too. She'd never been to Eam Hall before and knew nothing of its 300 year history. So, any first impressions? Well, the first impression is that I feel as though people are watching out of those windows. Really? Yeah. And I, then I just get this feeling in, in my stomach, like it's this big pulling into something. It pulls Sounds from the solar dramatic. plexus. Yeah, and it's getting that like churny feeling. Is it positive, negative, or...? Just different. Right. It's, it's exciting, really, more than anything. And I think, what am I going to find inside? Uh, I bet it's really good. So I feel as though this, this house is packed with all sorts of different energies. We were met at the hall by its current owner, Elizabeth Wright. Eam Hall was built as a wedding present for John Wright and his new bride, Elizabeth, in 1675, and the Wright family have lived here ever since. As you walk around the house, watched by the eyes of the people who used to live here, you don't have to be much of a psychic to be able to feel that the place is soaked in history. <laughs> I can see somebody running, they're late, and, and they're, they're lifting the skirts up. And that lady was embroidering this, and another lady came and just kissed the top of her head. Many of the images and feelings Jenny received were unexpected and personal to Eames' former residents. They weren't exactly the sort of visions I was expecting. Daffodils, this time of year, meant something to him. He had some sort of riding accident or fell off a horse or it's all around here that I'm feeling. I'd imagined that Jenny would pick up that the owner of this coat, John Wright, had fathered 11 children and six had died. To me, that would seem to be pretty significant, but she didn't. It's only the sort of things I can feel oh, sure. at the time of wearing sure. it. So mm. that's perhaps why it didn't come through as the first thing. Because the first thing that came through was he wanted to be kept warm. Yes. And yeah. stew. He loved stew. So which room are we off to? I think we're going to the library next. OK. In the library, scratched on a window, is a 200-year-old love poem. So romantic. Fanny, ye pride of nature's beauteous powers, her sex is envy in ye pride of ours. Regardless triumphs in a world of charms, wins every eye and every eye. I just feel, as I'm looking out here and waiting for something, I've got this pulling here in, in my stomach as, as well, as if I'm waiting for somebody to arrive or... This was the pulling feeling I oh, got really? as soon as I came here. And it's just lovely. They had problems with his teeth, you know. 
a lot, lot of trouble with his gums or, or teeth. A great thinker, this man, so I don't know what he did, but he thought about all sorts of things, not just mundane things. And I feel as though this gentleman had connections in different parts of the country and even possibly the world. And do you get any sense of what his relationship with, was with the person that he wrote the ode to? I don't, I don't think the Paps were lovers. It could be unrequited love. That's quite interesting, really, yes. I mean, we think it was written by this gentleman here, who, uh, whose there. name is Robert Wright. And, uh, he was actually, I mean, I don't know what date he wrote the poem, but at one point he was a soldier in Gibraltar. Oh, that would be the connections abroad. Well, he's written yes. that then. The poem is to a Fanny Holm a young lady called Fanny Holm, who was in Stockport. And uh, Robert married twice, but it wasn't to Fanny Holm. Ah. So when you said unrequited love, maybe mm. it was uh, just a romance, a romantic feeling that he had for her. You have a well here? Yes, we do. Yes, he knows the well. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny had known nothing about the Wright family or Ian Hall before her visit, but she had correctly connected Robert Wright with the well. I wondered, would she be able to tune into the tragic incident that happened at the well during Robert's it's lifetime? That came into being. Do you know, this has got a lovely, happy feel, this has. Right. Yeah, as though um, you got on with it and you're working and you're going away like this. Lovely and happy. But then, as she moved around the room, things seem to change. Over here, I'm, I'm going this way, and I can see here, I feel as though I'm much more masculine now here. And of course, stay away, you know, move away, don't go near it. Because sometimes you don't have to touch things. Really, you don't? Mm, don't and sometimes people would go on. down this well for some reason. Um, uh, because I can just see them, just sort of Climbing down here. Down. Inside yeah. it? Yeah. I can see him, this gentleman, going to retrieve something. Do you think it was Robert who was... Because when we are in the library and he we were got talking a thing about, Robert, about the well, hadn't he? Well. Oh, yes, you he thought, liked... You thought he did? Yeah. What, but, he liked it? Or he... Well, he was, he was always concerned about it. So I don't know if, if the stones used to fall, but he, was, he had great concerns about this well. I wanted to tell her, whisper in her ear, Jenny, someone drowned in the well. Maybe she needs to get a bit closer. I think there's a bit of difficulty with this well at some, at some stage. So if somebody's fallen in it or had some problem with it, in the house it was like, what was the matter with, with the well? What sort of feelings are you get from so Just fear concern. Those, or... Yes, yes. Concern and fear. And the gentleman upstairs that was, you know, worried about the well. But this has got a different feeling altogether than the one over there. So over there happy. it was nice and happy. And this one, be careful, go steady. Somebody was going down the well to try and retrieve something. Yeah. And I feel as though, you know, someone's possibly fallen in the well as well. Well, there was a report that a, a, a servant girl, Sarah Mills, was drowned in Wright's well. Really? Uh, accidentally? Accidental. Well, we don't know whether it was accidental or not. It doesn't actually specify oh, how she was drowned. What period was that? Um, about 1775. And was that in relation to Robert? Is that, that would have tied in quite well to Robert, right. yes. yes. Jenny had made the connection with the well, but I think I'd been expecting the Hollywood version of psychometry, an immediate shocking rush of energy and traumatic images and feelings linked to the drowned servant. It was all rather low-key, and the reality seemed a far cry from the dramatic scenario we've all been fed. Then, by chance, something very strange happened to me at a hotel in Derby. We'd gone to the Georgian Hotel so that I could have a try at getting a reading from a building, and at the top of these stairs, I suddenly felt a rush of vertigo. Little did I know, this was the very spot where many people had reported seeing a ghost. I'm feeling a huge sense of vertigo, but I don't know if it's just because of where I'm standing. 
Did you feel ill because you're dizzy? I felt or sort of lightheaded. Lightheaded? Bit, yeah, somebody's ever fainted here or, I don't or <laughs> fell? I just or... had a sense of, of uh, vertiginous, sort of wobbly. It was just a just a feeling. Flash of a, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a it pretty strong a feeling you've got, then, isn't it? I don't know. Well, well yeah. I, don't I've ever had one. I haven't had one like a sensation feeling like that before. The feeling I'd had was very weird and very powerful, and it just came from nowhere as soon as I stood by the stair rail. Had I just taken the stairs too fast? Or did it mean I was picking up some energy from a past event? A, a, a man in a blue suit has been seen sort of leaning over this banister. Really? And falling back against that door. This Good heavens. Other, other guests yes, have seen, seen it. it. My, wife the has, same thing. my wife has seen it, and members of staff have also seen Gosh, it. Gosh, that is interesting. Um, OK. Uh, I was quite startled by what happened at the hotel in Derby, cos, um, I wasn't expecting to get anything right at all. When I went up to that first floor landing, actually almost before I touched anything I felt a bit peculiar and then when I touched the wall I really did have a sense of dizziness and of, of being kind of unsteady on my feet and, and, and of looking over the thing and feeling sort of, I think I said vertiginous at the time, which um, actually really <laughs> sent a shiver down my spine when he said the thing about uh, Hotel guests reporting that they'd seen seen a, a funny man standing looking over the thing and then get looking dizzy and stumbling backwards. That really, really made my blood go a bit cold. After the break, I tackle a case with a psychic detective. I know it's around here somewhere, Jane. I just know it is. <laughs> 